Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff from the CyberPro Podcast, back with another episode today. And today we are speaking with Dana, who is the founder and CEO of her own company. And she's going to be telling us a little bit about herself, what she does, and how she will solve all of our cybersecurity questions from now until eternity. And with that, because hackers don't sleep, neither should we, and we should jump right in. Good morning, Dana. How are you? I'm, I'm well. How are you? Thank you for having me. I've had too much coffee today, and hopefully my editors can edit that out. Uh, question number one, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, please? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So my name is Dana Mantilla, and my company is Identity Protection Planning. And what I try to do is help people learn how to better protect themselves against cybersecurity. I speak in very layman's terms to regular non-technical people. I think that we've been approaching cybersecurity the wrong way by going after it from the IT department down in a very technical way, where I think we need to talk to regular people in a language that they can understand. So I make videos and I post them on social media and I help organizations train their employees on how they can better protect their computer the company, the building, all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. We're going to get back to the the the, the layman's terms and the, and the non-technical terms because I think that's super important. Uh, but no, question number two, uh, you are the founder and CEO of your own company. Congratulations, welcome, and thank you for taking the red pill. Tell us a little bit about that and what you find most fascinating about being a C-suite during these crazy times. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have a very small company and I think anybody that has a company that regardless of this crazy pandemic that we had to navigate, you know, the, one of the biggest things is that when it's your company, it, you're the one making the decisions, which is good, you know, because you can make whatever decisions you want, but you don't really have a lot of people sometimes to maybe bounce off something that you're questioning, hmm, is this such a good idea? So you really have to think and then overthink and then think again as to, you know, what's, what's the right thing to do here. And, you know, shifting during the pandemic was a huge deal for everybody. I mean, one of my biggest things was I had a bigger opportunity because people were asking me beforehand, could I come and travel and speak to their organizations? And there's no way I could do that with my schedule. I just can't do that. And now we're all living in a Zoom world. So now I've done a lot of virtual training for big groups, small groups, and it's, it's given me a huge new opportunity. Yes, it is a bold new world. Let's hope it's a good one. Uh, question number three, uh, we hear from other industry leaders, specifically those uh, at the higher end like yourself who are entrepreneurs, that cybersecurity is not only a top concern and getting bigger, and I'm going to add to the mix the comment that you made on the first one, where it is now becoming a major issue for everyone who is no longer at the technical forefront, but is an everyday person. So when you hear that question, what comes to mind? So it's the human factor that we all need to start looking at. I think that you know by attacking cybersecurity, having the technical people you know, then go down and train, that doesn't really work. And like I mentioned before, we have to speak a language that everybody understands. First of all, we have to make sure everybody understands that these risks are out there. 85% of the problems are being caused by the non-technical staff that is clicking on things, giving away credentials, Accidental, I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure there's some maliciousness, but not necessarily all the time. So we need to, we need to start there. If we started with every company having some basic, basic cyber hygiene, the country, the companies, the world would be in a much safer place. And unfortunately, not even that level is being done at a lot of organizations. Yeah, which is even more uh, critical and time sensitive nowadays because we do live in a remote Zoom world. So, wow, you have a big job ahead of you. Uh, question number four, let's drill down into that a little bit more. Uh, when you talk to clients and customers, how do you teach the companies and their employees to better protect themselves as well as the companies that they work for against these cyber attacks? Well, I think the way that, that, that I approach it also is a little bit differently where I'm not talking to the, the business owners and saying, okay, we're gonna punish everybody that clicks on the bad links. No bad you, you're getting fired, you're out of here. We need to look at it as let's, let's help these people, let them learn something that will help protect them, their kids, their adult parents. You know, So if you're giving people regular tools that they can then apply in their own world, I mean, all these smart devices that we're all using that uh, you know, there's a lot of security risks out there with that. 
But if you teach these people about that, they, they get interested because then they can better protect their house and all that. And then they, they change, it's a cultural change, which is what we need. We need a cultural change in the way that everybody's looking at cybersecurity, not necessarily just, a, okay, we checked the box, here we go, now, now it's said and done. So I say we need to teach people to help themselves that gain their interest and then they'll be it'll it'll just be a, a mind shift with how they wind up protecting things for the company yeah and that's a super important uh, phrase that you said about a cultural change we'll get back to that a little bit more because i think i think what you're saying with that is you know we live in a world that changes quickly but somehow in the last 10 years you know we've managed to adapt into a smartphone you talk about devices a smartphone world now it, the, the next step is to is to teach a new necessary skill set for the vast majority of people who aren't quite there yet. It's, that sounds like what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, you think about when we were kids, everybody knew what to do in a fire drill. Everybody. I mean, and it wasn't like every day on the news, school buildings were burning down, but every single kid knew exactly what to do in a fire drill. And we're seeing cyber attacks every single day on the news. And yet, if there was a, an incident, do most organizations even have any clue what to do? No. Do the employees know what they should be doing? Yeah, somebody on Twitter, somebody calling their family. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, loose ends that, that we haven't done. And that training has just not been put into place because probably we just seem to think it's the IT departments that they'll take care of it. This is a technical thing, not a human thing. That's what I think the biggest barrier has been is everybody says, well, what would you do if there was an, an issue? They say, well, I'd call the IT department. And I think everybody, I would say 97% of people would probably give that response if you asked them, what would you do if there was something? A disconnect, very well put, right? They don't think it can hurt them, so they don't think about it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Hey, for those of our viewers who might want to learn a little bit more about your data, uh, of what you do and your company, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, either LinkedIn or YouTube is the best way to get in touch with me and to see some of my content. Excellent. All right, question number five, our fun question. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit of piece of retro technology that makes you smile. Well, one of my, um, someone in my network in LinkedIn sent me a big, huge, old rotary phone that weighs probably about 50 pounds and I love it. And I showed it to my kids and they were like, what is that? They had no idea about the whole spinning the thing around and everything. And just watching them look at this thing, it was like, like you know, it was from outer space or something. So I would say that's one of my favorite things that makes me smile. Nice, I love it. Thank you for being on today. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, it was a lot of fun. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching the Cyber Pro Podcast today. You can find more content here and here and there.